8K autofocus, people. Autofocus. AF is for autofocus. Where's your heads at? Let's go talk about the Canon R5. That bench is closed. That area is closed. That bench is closed. 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 Those are in a swamp. Closed. That looks like a good spot to post up. The Canon R5. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Let's talk about it. What's going on guys, Ryan Nelson here. And if you've watched this channel at all, you know I am a fan of my Canon cameras. I'm not specifically brand loyal to Canon, but they are my go-to cameras when I need something that I know is gonna work, it's gonna be reliable, it's just gonna work, function, do what I want it to. So I'm excited for the R5. I just wanted to talk about it a little bit. And then yesterday, April 20th, Canon announced some more features of the R5. I feel like they're still holding back a lot on it but they did announce some very, very unique features of it, and I wanted to talk about that real quick. So, 8K. 8K, everybody's jonesing out about the 8K. Is that a feature I think I'm gonna use? Probably not. My Blackmagic shoots 6K, which is pretty cool. I like the ability, I like to be able to punch in and out a little bit, but if it had a 4K RAW setting, I would probably shoot 4K RAW if it had 4K RAW option. This has 8K RAW, but I'm assuming the 8K RAW, you're gonna have to have the CF Express cards to shoot 8K RAW internal. I don't know if we're gonna be able to shoot 8K RAW external. That'd be cool. Wait, actually, no. We won't be able to shoot 8K RAW external unless Atomos or other recorders uh, update their firmware to do that. So as far as I know, all the Atomos recorders, at least in the ones I have, are all 4K. Dual pixel autofocus in all 8K modes. Dual pixel autofocus in 4K. Dual pixel autofocus 4K 120 FPS. I don't need my Sony camera anymore. I can I can sell it. You want anybody want a Sony FS5 Mark II? I'll sell it to you cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Let me know. If you're looking for a Sony FS5 Mark II, you want a cool cinema camera. It's pretty good. I mean, it's it's okay. It's no Canon. It's no Canon, but for you Sony people out there, I'll sell you a Sony FS5 Mark II real cheap. So other features that I'm excited about on this camera, 422 10-bit internal. I am very curious to see if this is gonna require that CF Express card as well, or if that's gonna be able to sh be shot to an SD card. Only time will tell. I don't have my hands on one yet. I wish I did. Canon, hey, if you guys wanna, if you guys wanna send me one to test out, um, I do live in the desert, so I can test it for heat overload be a good test. It's easy. I just take it outside and set it in the sun. 110 degree, 115 degree days are coming up. So Canon has finally announced an IBIS in the R5. They've also announced the IBIS in the C300 Mark III. I'm curious to check that one out too, but it's a little bit more expensive of a camera. They haven't released the price on the Canon R5 yet. Anyway, they finally have an IBIS and they're still including the digital image stabilization. So I am really, really curious of how well these two are gonna work together. Hopefully, we can get some really, really stable handheld shots, but then if we can't, then we can always fall back to the slow motion if the IBIS isn't up to snuff, if it isn't what we're looking for. I'm curious, I'm really curious. Canon, you keep us hanging like it's a it's cliffhanger. It's like, here's a little tidbit here, here's a little tidbit there, and then, you know, we might release it soon. So going back to the 422 10-bit, I know with this R, I have to have the Atomos recorder to get 10-bit external. Is that gonna be internal as well? Was that, in the, was that in the press conference? I'm not sure. I don't remember right now. We would like to add that the 8K video capture will be able to record up to 30p, 2997 to be exact, with 422 10-bit Canon Log or 422 10-bit HDRPQ, and will be able to record internally. So if you like to shoot sports or shoot things really fast, one thing about this camera is it's gonna be able to shoot 20 frames per second with the electronic shutter. Now, I know when I shoot the electronic shutter on this R, if you're shooting a fast moving subject, it, you can get some weird blur to it. That's a little strange. You don't really notice it unless you're flipping through the photos real fast. So I don't know if that's gonna be a problem on the R5 or not. So I find that to kind of defeat the purpose of having a high speed continuous shutter for like sports photography or action, or even photographing some events, some speakers. Just when they're talking with their hands, you can get a really weird jello effect in their arm if they're talking with their hands a lot. 12 frames per second mechanical, you don't get the jello effect with mechanical, so I mean, that's still plenty fast. 12 frames a second, that's a lot of frames, that's a lot of pictures. Dual card slots, we do know it's gonna have dual card slots. It's gonna have one SD and one CF Express slot. 
I don't own any CF Express slots, so I'm probably still gonna be shooting on one SD card. Will that be a problem? Only time will tell. I haven't lost anything yet. I have had a CF card go bad, but I've never lost any data due to a CF card. If I lose this, then you'll never see this and you'll never know. Actually, I'll probably tell you. But I doubt I'll lose this because that's a brand new card. So there's gonna be a lot to like about this camera. I'm really, really curious. I'm excited to check it out. I don't know that I'm gonna buy one necessarily, but I do know that I will rent it for certain projects I have coming up, hopefully, if they, if they come back in line. I do want to check this camera out and I will. I will definitely check this camera out and review it, compare it to the R, compare it to past experiences, past cameras I've used. So stay tuned for that. I'll link that up here when it's done and you know by the time this camera is out you'll probably not even be watching this video because it's not even out yet. We don't even know all the specs. We don't know the price. So I'm not exactly telling you anything you can't find on the Canon website right now because I can't. That's you know as much as I know, as much as she knows, as much as he knows. I, that guy doesn't look like a Canon user so. He probably doesn't know anything about it. My thoughts on why this camera took so long to get out. Canon has been very, very reliable for me. It's always been the camera that worked. Every shoot I'm on, when cameras start failing, my Canon always works. So my theory on why this is taking so long to come out is because they wanna make sure that this is gonna be a workhorse camera. Everything is gonna work. Everything that's gonna be in there, it's gonna be fully functional and it's just plain going to work. I hope that's the case. Canon, make this camera work. It will be a game changer, a beast of a camera. We're all looking forward to it. I know there are some skeptics that everybody keeps waiting for. Oh, it shoots 8K, but you can only shoot for 30 seconds at a time. 8K raw. 30 seconds? I don't know. 30 minutes? Who knows? Only time will tell. But I am excited about it. I will definitely check it out. I'll definitely review it. You will see this camera on this channel very soon, whenever it comes out. And if you know anybody at Canon, or if you are Canon watching this, I doubt it, but if you are at Canon and you wanna send me this to check out, I would be super grateful for that. Super excited to check it out. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you think of this camera. I'm really curious of your thoughts, my thoughts. You just listen to them all. I'm just sitting here on a park bench talking about the R5. Do me a favor, guys. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button down there. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.